Sure, you can go to 7-Eleven and have a sh nacho experience. But if you want a good one, it's gonna cost this. But I think it should cost something more like this. That is butt cheaper. So a gourmet nacho experience is gonna cost ya. All right, you want all the fixins? You want the meat and the avocado and the sour cream and onions and charred corn and nacho cheese. But real nacho cheese made with like a, like a Mornay sauce. It's gonna cost you, buddy. This isn't your 7-Eleven neon cheese and literally nothing else and you're farting for days. You might still be farting from this, but an experience always costs you unless you make it properly like we do here. So with that being said, let's make this, shall we? Throwing pre-shredded cheese and a bunch of old chips and slamming that into the oven is not okay. So instead, let's make this simpler. No oven needed, just a stove top. And it doesn't even need to be gas. Now let's begin with our boeuf topping. To make this cheaper, I'm cutting the beef with mushrooms, which will add a similar boeuf-like flavor and a nice and moist and juicy texture to the whole dish. Now get yourself half a pound or 227 grams of cremini mushrooms and chop them extremely fine with a knife. Think mince. Now to a 12 inch pan, add a splash of vegetable oil just to go at the bottom, set over medium high. Then once hot, add all your mushrooms and let those cook stirring often for about three to four minutes or until most of their moisture has evaporated and they're starting to pick up some nice color. Season a taste with salt, stir them and scoot those to the side. Add a touch more oil if needed. Then add half a pound or 227 grams of ground beef. Ideally something around 70 to 80% lean. The fattier, the better. Now press that out so it gets a full con Contact sear. Hit with some salt to taste. Let that sear for two minutes. Flip. Wow, like some sort of weird burger patty. Hit again with salt and peppy to taste. Sear two more minutes and then chop that up with a spatula or more effectively with a potato masher until a decently fine crumble. Now, once it's fully cooked and getting a little with Add one can of chipotle peppers in adobo, press out just the juices through a fine mesh strainer, and reserve the solids for, uh, not this. Blend it into a marinade or something. Be creative. Now stir that in, then add a pinch of ground cumin optionally. Stir that in, then add three cloves of roughly chopped garlic to the beef, mix it in, and once it's crisp to your liking, it is done. Now let's talk chips. You really think, Papa is gonna have you buy chips? Come on now, the good stuff's gonna be expensive. And you wield the unbelievable power of the spatula, my friends. All you need is a big bag of corn tortillas, cut them into sixths like this, Boom, in half. Boom, then in thirds. And another, in thirds. You get the idea? Get a pot filled with just about one and a half quarts or one and a half liters of vegetable oil. Heat to 350 Fahrenheit and add your chips in batches to avoid overcrowding and fry for two to three minutes, tossing occasionally until the bubbling subsides and they start to pick up just a tiny bit of toasty color. Then fish them out, enter it in a wire rack and immediately season with salt to taste while they're still hot. I keep telling you not to season them when they're cold because the salt won't stick. Anyway, repeat with all your tortillas and just like that, you have chips. Now your house smells like fresh tortillas chips. Your neighbors, family, roommates, whoever it is, is probably going to thank you. And if they don't, well then don't give them any of your nachos and tell them I said that they can eat. Yeah, nacho sauce time, which is really just trashy Mornay. So let's make this quick and simple. Medium saucepan, add one and a half tablespoons or 21 grams of unsalted butter. Boom, medium heat, bang, it's melted, wow. Then add one and a half tablespoons or 15 grams of all-purpose flour. Whisk that together and let that cook while stirring often for about 30 to 40 seconds. Then whisk in one cup or 240 milliliters of whole milk. Then once it starts to thicken, whisk in the following spices if you have them, but guess what? They're optional. One teaspoon or three grams of paprika, half a teaspoon or two grams of ground cumin, and one teaspoon or three grams of garlic powder. Whisk that together, then whisk in half a cup or 30 36 grams of grated American cheese, and one cup or 72 grams of grated cheddar cheese. Keep on whisking until smooth and glossy. Now look, it might be a little too thick. Totally fine. Add a splash or two of milk until it gets that nice nacho drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Season with salt and pepper to taste if needed, and you got that nacho flow just for you. It's time for toppers. Basic, simple guac, one large avo, dice, mash with a fork, add salt and lime juice to taste, mash, beautiful. Half a red onion, thinly slice, wash with water to remove the aggressive bite of the onion but retain its sweetness and improve its texture. Four ounces or 113 grams of cherry tomatoes. Medium saucepan, touch of oil, medium high, salt, very, very, wow, hot my fingy wingy hot. Add them to the pan, sear for two minutes, swirling occasionally, just until they blister and soften lightly. One ear of corn, charred lightly over an open flame, turning on occasion for about a minute, remove the kernels, and fantastic. Now, I assemble my nachos more like lasagna. Look, you want a piece of something in every bite. Don't be lazy like too many restaurants and just throw everything on top so that when you finish the good stuff, there's only bald ass mm -hmm. chips left on the bottom. Depending on if you do multiple servings or not, decide on the full amount of chips that you're gonna use. Take half that amount, put that on the plate or tray, follow that with your beef to your heart's desire, a nice drizzle of your nacho cheese, some of your cherry tomatoes scattered nicely, a little bit of that there corn, fresh red onion, some thinly sliced serrano chilies, which you should only need two of them for this whole recipe. Cilantro leaves for garnish, and then boom, add your second half of your chips 
chips. And guess what? Do it again, pal. This time, starting with the nacho cheese. You know, we did the nacho cheese differently on the first layer to act as an adhesive, but this one is for aesthetic. After the cheese, more of your beef, your charred tomatoes, corn, red onion, beautifully, your serranos, a light dollop of sour cream, and your guacamole. And finally, finish with more cilantro if desired, albeit optional. And then it has to be one of the most towering, non-economical looking nachos. Now look, this tray was a good 75% of the ingredients that we had, but not many are gonna eat this whole dang tray and usually calculate these prices based off the servings. So if you were to serve this over a few different plates per person, then it comes out to this price right here. But if you're gonna make this whole full tray in one big go, well then it's this price right here. But did we beat the restaurant quality version? Well, the answer is hopefully yes. So let's taste test. That's a big nacho. Bigger Man Kendrick pointed something out. You see, the beauty of this is I actually layered the nachos, like a lasagna. Why is that? You ever order nachos and they just put everything on top and then by the time you've eaten all that, there's just chips left? Don't do that to people. We deserve respect. This is respect. And for this price right here. <laughs> I mean, do you really need me to describe to you how to eat nachos? Nachos are a DIY, choose your own adventure. Do whatever you want. You got a little bit of dip, a little bit of this and that. There's cheese on a piece, there's cheese not on a piece. There's some, dip. Can we get a peer into the future in this portal right here? Breaking news, President Weissman declares nachos the national food. This is a deluxe nacho with all the flavors, all the textures I could possibly want and more. It feels gourmet, it feels gastronomic. It feels like I'm at a nice restaurant that happens to serve nachos. May not be Michelin starred, but serves really good nachos. And for none of that bullshit pricing, what more could you possibly want? Because I know what you want. You want B-roll.